Okay, good morning, or afternoon, I guess, as of a couple minutes ago. So, like he just said, my name is Andy Mochler. Um, I live in Chicago, Illinois, in the United States, um, and I'm a senior front-end developer at Shopify. I work on our merchant marketing team. So what that means is I build experiences like this one um, or this one, which help people who run their business on Shopify learn more about their store's performance and build a better business. So uh, the first one was a dashboard we built, and then this live view we built for last um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and it allows you to see your store traffic in real time. Um, and we built all of these products with uh, TypeScript and React. Today I'm going to talk about how TypeScript ruined my life, but in a good way. So I'll start out by chatting about TypeScript and me a little bit. So my first exposure to TypeScript was actually about four years ago. It was at my first developer job. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't understand any of the TypeScript code, and uh, it really scared me away from it. Uh, at the time, I, I didn't understand what a class was, and they were using classes everywhere, and uh, it just made no sense. So fast forward a few more years. Uh, now we're at about two years ago. I'm working at Shopify. Um, things have changed. I understand things slightly better at this point. Um, and a coworker of mine started doing an experiment uh, to see if we could rewrite our analytics stuff in uh, React. And he was using Flow for type checking. And I started to dive in and help him out a little bit. And I really liked the experience with Flow. And it turned out that we didn't use a lot of those experiments. Uh, only one of the files ended up uh, in production, and we still use it to this day. But uh, we kind of moved away from Flow. But at the time, I learned that there was another team at Shopify that was exploring what we wanted to do uh, to rewrite our text st stack. And one of the parts of that was using TypeScript. And so as, um, as a company, we started switching to TypeScript. And since we were writing React uh, on the analytics team, we slowly started to move over as well. And the rest is history. And now, whenever I start a project without JavaScript, I feel sort of a deep sense of guilt, or without TypeScript, um, a deep sense of guilt. Um, I feel like really uncomfortable, like I'm missing out on all of the great features that TypeScript gives me. So next, let's talk about TypeScript and all of you. So um, there are a lot of reasons to use a type system with JavaScript. Um, and there's a lot of reasons not to use a type system with JavaScript. And it'll be up to you to sort of figure out if using types is a good fit for your project um, and if it's a good fit for the developers on your team. Also, TypeScript is just one example. There's a lot of type systems for JavaScript these days. Uh, if TypeScript doesn't feel quite right, you can try something like Flow or something like Reason that will give you a lot of the same powers, uh, but won't be exactly what I show today. Um, and also, what I'm hoping to, that you all get out of this talk is that I hope that you understand why you should explore a type system for your projects and why you should consider it and play around with it. And then we're going to do like a quick run through of some basic syntax. So if you've never seen typed JavaScript before, uh, you'll know a little more about it by the end of this. And then I'm going to show a couple of basic examples of how you can get started with a project today and uh, be running TypeScript in your code bases. All right, so I want to start with a brief disclaimer. Um, originally, this slide said everything I'm about to say is a lie, but uh, that seemed a little too harsh for the reality. But I just want to remind you that uh, type systems and the types that you write and the types that other people write are all written by humans. So you still have to be defensive when you write typed JavaScript. A lot of the same rules apply. You should really think about this exactly how you think about your normal JavaScript, but just with some slight adjustments. Um, also, another disclaimer, TypeScript is a bit of extra work to get going. You have to find the types for the packages you're using, which for the most part already exist. And you have to write um, a couple type annotations as you go. But in my opinion, it is worth the extra work. All right, so let's talk about why to use types. The first, and this is the most important one to me, is that types make your code way more self-documenting. So documentation is really hard as a developer. You maybe write you know, a readme with your component or with your function or with your library, but you have to remember to go back and update that readme as you go, and that can be hard. And maybe you instead put comments in line in your code, but again, you have to remember to update them, and it's easy for them to get out of sync. Um, it can be pretty hard to express the concepts of your code through those comments. 
Um, but with a type system, you're annotating the actual code. So you know that it's always going to be in sync with how your code is behaving. If you say that something is a string, and you have TypeScript compile it, and the compiler passes, well, that thing is going to be a string. And when you look through your application, you can have a reasonable amount of certainty that whatever the type system says that those variables or parameters are going to be, that's what they will be. Second, it lets the computer keep track of context instead of you and your team. So when you start a project, maybe it's just you, and you have about 1,000 lines of code. And for the most part, you can remember where you've called certain functions. Maybe you write a new function, and a month later, you change the parameters that it takes. And you can sort of keep track of, you know, I, I called it in this file and in this file. And you can go through, and you can update those things. And there's some naive tools you can use to help you out with that. You can do a global search on your project. Um, a little less naive, you can have really good tests that try to catch those sorts of changes. But it's really useful to have one more thing trying to keep all of that context for you. And it's even better when it's a computer doing that. So now if you change the signature of a function, the compiler is going to catch that across your whole code base. Anything that calls into that function is going to have to satisfy the compiler before it will successfully compile. Uh, next, it helps you avoid some common pitfalls. So TypeScript has done a great job of building a great ecosystem. Uh, one of my favorite things is that I am terrible at remembering the DOM API. Can't remember if query selector all returns an array or a node list. And I never remember what you can call on a node list. Um, I never remember what can return undefined versus an empty array or an empty list. And TypeScript will help you catch those sorts of things. So when you maybe don't anticipate that something will be null or undefined, uh, TypeScript will help to tell you that. Um, and then the last two points sort of go together. So it encourages API-driven development, which means that you really focus on your API as you go. Um, in JavaScript, sometimes it's easy to just push through an options hash, and you slowly add things to that. And before you know it, without really having it well documented somewhere, you can be passing in you know, 15 or 20 options or something like that. With TypeScript, you have to be explicit about what's getting passed on that options object. And so it really helps you pay attention to your API and pay attention to how you're designing your code and how it's interfacing with other parts of your application. And then finally, to go along with that, there's some really amazing development tools. Um, TypeScript has an amazing ecosystem. And this is like not the best reason to use something. I mean, developer tools get built around every language and every framework. But currently, right now, the dev tools for TypeScript are really awesome. All right. So I'm going to try to cruise through this syntax stuff pretty quickly, give you a little taste. Um, I really recommend the TypeScript docs. They're pretty easy to understand, uh, and there's some great getting started guides there. But I wanted to give a little taste of what it's like to see some TypeScript code and to write it. So here's like the hello world of types. So you'll see that I have three simple identifiers here. Um, I have city, which is a constant. And then I have this type annotation afterwards. So anytime you see a colon and then that like yellow highlighted um, identifier there, that's going to be a type annotation. So I'm saying that city is a string, and then I assign it to Amsterdam. And I do the same thing for this cash prize number variable and a loading Boolean. And um, so now I have types in my JavaScript. It's pretty simple. And so now you can see um, I have this little red squiggly. Uh, that's what it looks like in VS Code. But depending on the plugin or whatever you're using, it'll look a little different. But it's telling me that I can't call index of on a Boolean on loading. So that's great. But TypeScript is a little smarter than that. So um, it can actually infer the types here. So just by assigning it to a string or a number or a Boolean, it can learn that loading is still a Boolean, and it still gives me that um, helpful hint at the bottom. And even as I reassign the variable, it'll keep track that maybe it could be a Boolean or a string or a Boolean or a number. Um, but it also kind of helps you catch those things, because uh, they're not always the best. OK, arrays. So you can do a very similar thing if you have a list of strings, for example, like we do here. I have this foods variable. Um, and I can assign it a list of these strings. So I've, I push in all of these emoji strings here. And um, when I do this assignment, it's happy. And when I call push, which is an array method, it's happy about it. But if I try to do anything that is a little unusual, it'll get mad at me, and it'll throw me an error. So here, if I try to assign it to a, a list of numbers, or if I try to push in a Boolean, or call a method that doesn't exist on an array, um, it's going to help me notice that. 
All right, functions. So this is where it gets really interesting. So far, uh, you were probably thinking, like, when I declare a variable, I can just like look a couple lines above where I am and see what it is. But with a function, usually we're going to be writing some modules, and we're going to be importing and exporting. And um, it's a little bit harder to remember what exactly a function takes in and what it gives us back. So here we have this reverse function. Uh, you'll see that word is typed as a string. And then there's another type annotation, which is the return type. And then inside, we just have normal JavaScript. Um, it's able to infer everything else. So it knows that join returns a string at the end. And if I try to reverse race car, it's happy, because I told it that it should expect a string. But if I try to reverse a Boolean, it's going to be upset with me. And again, TypeScript is a bit smarter than that. So I try to write TypeScript as close to JavaScript as I possibly can and only sort of do like the bare necessities so that it looks pretty normal still. And here we can omit that return type because the compiler is able to infer it. It can look at it and say, join. It's going to give me back a string, and I know that that's what it's going to return. All right, interfaces. So an interface is sort of like a typed object. So this looks similar to like plain JavaScript object syntax. Um, at this point, it's probably feeling like a bit of like a fire hose of information. Don't worry, we're almost to the end of the syntax part. But uh, here we declare an interface. I'm calling it person. And then I have the properties and their types inside of that interface. So I have name, which is a string, and I have age, which is a number. And then when I create an object that I want to be of this person interface, I need to make sure to supply it with a name, which is a string, and an age, which is a number. That's also really helpful for functions, because now I can pass these objects around, and I can name the types, and I can name the interfaces, and TypeScript is able to infer things from it. So here, it's going to expect a person object when I calculate their birth year. I guess this would be, yeah, their birth year. And uh, you can also infer that this is going to return a number. So 2018 minus another number is going to give me back a number. All right, and then finally, type aliases. So this is sort of like the most powerful tool in TypeScript. It sort of rolls everything else up into one. Um, you have this type keyword, and then you can name your type. And then you have a lot of tools that you can use. So here I'm just showing you guys the union. Um, so the pipe operator, you can just think about that as an or, a union. So a vegetable can be broccoli or a carrot. Fruit can be orange or kiwi or watermelon. Um, you can chain these together, so an ingredient could be a vegetable or a fruit if I have like a juice stand, for example. And then in my code, if I say that juice has to be an ingredient array and I give it broccoli and watermelon, the compiler is happy. But if I give it bread, which is not a fruit or a vegetable, and it's not one of my ingredients, then it's going to flag it and ask me to fix it. All right, so I have a couple of demos um, to show you how you can get started with TypeScript. So we're going to start out with just basic compilation. And I have this project. Hopefully, it's big enough. Um, and to avoid problems with the Wi-Fi, I've just done one step ahead of time, which is start a project and then add TypeScript as a dev dependency. Okay, So you can just do yarn add dev or uh, npm save dev TypeScript. And I'll create a new file called index.ts. And I'll write a function. So Let's do a greeting function, and we'll take a name, which is a string, and then we're just going to console log it. So hello, name. OK, and then if I try to call that here, if I pass in something that's not a string, it might be a little hard to see, but I get this error, and it'll give me an error message that says argument of type true is not assignable to parameter of type string. So it's telling me true is not a string. I need to try to give it a string. And so if I pass through something like Amsterdam JS, then it's going to be happy. And you'll see all kinds of awesome tooling here. So if I just hover over greet, it will give me the function signature. Um, it also tells me that it returns void right now because I don't have a return statement anywhere in there. And to compile this, I run TSC, which is the TypeScript compiler that's included when you install TypeScript. And then I pass it the file name. And that finishes. And we can see the compiled output here. So for this, it obviously isn't super exciting. It was a pretty simple function that we wrote. But it does compile it down. Um, it, I think that this, by default, is doing um, ES5, maybe ES3. I can't remember. Um, and it's all happy. If I come back in here 
and give it something that it's not happy about. So this is kind of to show what it would be like if you don't want to use these specific dev tools. I can run yarn TSC again, and it'll give me an error message. It's a little hard to see in there because there's some other output from yarn, but it says argument of type true is not assignable to parameter of type string like we saw before. So without any of these dev tools, you can get started with TypeScript, and you can start compiling sort of simple scripts like this. Now, most of us are probably writing applications that are slightly more complex than this four-line program that I wrote just now. Um, and I want to give you a little taste of what it might be like to get started with that. Um, TypeScript works with pretty much any tools you're using. So if you're using Webpack and you have a more compli complex app, um, TypeScript works great with that. But I'm going to show a demo right now with Parcel, which for me, if you're just trying to do something pretty simple with TypeScript, is the best way to go because it supports it. So I'll open this project up. And in this one, I've done a few more things ahead of time. I've installed three dependencies, React and React DOM, and then um, Shopify Polaris, which that's our design system, and we have a set of React components. We're going to use those to see what it looks like to consume a library that is also typed with TypeScript. And then in our dev dependencies, I have TypeScript like before. I have Parcel Bundler, which is going to bundle our code for us. Um, and then I have two types packages here. So, um, these come from a repository called Definitely Typed. I think last year it was like the most contributed to repository on GitHub. Uh, most packages that you use probably already have type definitions in there. It's really easy to go out and get them. So I just installed these two, and now I have the types for React and React DOM, and they're very well maintained. And uh, we're pretty much ready to go. So I won't go into the nuts and bolts of Parcel. It's like a whole other talk, a whole other issue. Um, it's pretty easy to get started with. but here I have a React app, and uh, this boilerplate should look pretty familiar. I import some CSS. Um, I import React and React DOM. App provider is required by Polaris. You don't need to worry about that too much. And then I render this into the DOM. All right, so let's start writing some TypeScript with React. So you'll see that I have this app class and extends React component. Um, if I ask. Visual Studio Code, what I can use in here, you'll see that from the types, I have a lot of help. Um, it tells me which met methods have become unsafe recently. Um, but I just want to do render. And I'm going to return pretty simple little app here. Oh, that won't work. OK. And we'll wait for this to build. Might take a second. All right, so you can see really tiny up in the corner, we have Hello World. So, so far, again, this looks exactly, this is, doesn't look like TypeScript at all. This is just normal, you know, React, JSX kind of code that we always write. And you'll find that that happens a lot with TypeScript, that you're, you know, writing away in your TypeScript files, but really you're just writing normal JavaScript. And every once in a while, you have a small change that um, helps the compiler know a little bit more about your code. So, let's import from the Polaris package to see how that works. So I'm going to bring in Shopify Polaris. And here, this is able to list everything that's available to me. So there's all these functions and components. I'm going to pick this page component. All right. All right. So it might be a little bit tough to see, but here we have a red underline underneath the page component. If I scroll to the bottom of this error message, it says property title is missing in type, and then it gives me the type that I've passed to that React element. So what this is telling me is that a developer who wrote this page component marked the title prop as required. And this is awesome. So now, without having to go into the documentation, or maybe I've forgotten this, it's been a while since I've used this page component, the compiler can tell me ahead of time that I'm missing something that's required for this to work. And so. I'll add a title. And now you can see, hopefully, that there's no more red underlines. It's happy with everything I've done. If I come back here, we have this page component. It's passed the title through, and we have Hello World. And there's a bunch of optional properties that we can also use. So all of them are listed down here. So for example, if I want full width, which is optional, I can click on that. And TypeScript will help me know um, 
right now it's true. If I try to pass something invalid, it'll flag it for me. And without having to you know, save or run or anything to this code, it's able to tell me whether it's valid or not. So take that away. All right, so that was a pretty, pretty quick overview. Um, but hopefully it makes sense a little bit how easy it is to get started with TypeScript. All right, so I'm going to leave with a couple of thoughts about writing effective TypeScript. So what should you do to avoid um, sort of letting TypeScript ruin your life in a bad way instead of a good way? So the first one is treat your types like normal JavaScript. That goes for all TypeScript code. Only write what you need to write so that the compiler can understand it. And don't try to treat it like something separate. This goes for co code organization as well. Whatever standards and best practices you've discovered on your team for organizing your modules or your components or whatever it may be, organize your types in a similar way. Make them easy to discover. Uh, make them easy to use in the same way that everything else in your app is. Don't suddenly think that you're writing something totally new. Uh, the next one is to put some effort into your types and avoid any wherever possible. In fact, there's a flag you can tell the compiler that will be a little more aggressive about rejecting when you use any. Um, occasionally, it can be tempting. You're maybe in a hurry, and you just sort of want to like skip over the type checking part. But the most frustrating thing to me is when um, I know I've been in a hurry in the past, and I go to use some code that I wrote before, and suddenly I don't have all of that help that I'm so used to with TypeScript. Like It sort of ruins the whole experience. Um, so put effort into your types. Sometimes things can be a little difficult to express, but it's always worthwhile. Um, and you can express pretty much anything. I mean, if, you really, if you're a fan of duck typing, you can you know, make duck typing work with uh, TypeScript. You can make pretty much anything. You can write functions that generate types, all those sorts of things things. All right, and then this is my personal opinion, but um, I think that steering clear of type inheritance is a good idea. So try to keep your types really simple. Um, never have like long inheritance chains for types. And then also avoid clever types. So like I said before, you can express pretty much anything with the type system, uh, but sometimes those types can be a little too clever, and it makes them a little bit hard to use. All right, thank you so much. Uh, you can find me here. That's my handle pretty much everywhere. And uh, yeah, thank you. Give it up for Andy.